today is a bit rainy. I mean, it's supposed to be super rainy. It's, it should be pouring down now. Uh, but now uh, the rain is not so heavy. But anyway, I thought, what can I do? I wanted to go out and take some pictures. And the best way to do it as a landscape photographer is to go to a forest. So I came to this uh, local woodland that is very close to where I live and I haven't been here for a while now, almost half a year. Um, definitely for photography, I haven't been here photographing more than a year, I guess. Uh, anyway, I'm here today and as you can suggest from the title of this video, I'm going to talk about the the lens I use the most in, uh, when I'm going to do woodland photography. To be honest, I'm not sure if I can find any any pictures or compositions today. Uh, I hope that to have enough rain to create some sort of atmosphere here inside the forest. Because as you can see, the sky is it's totally grey. Uh, well, that's not a bad thing for woodland photography. We have enough light, but we don't have any direct light. Uh, so, I hope that the rain could provide me some atmosphere and uh, create some depths to play with uh, for the beginning inside the forest because usually we don't get much atmosphere here and on this this woodlands yeah usually even when it's foggy you don't get too much fog or maybe not at all inside the dense forest like this as you can see here in this footage we have a small town here but it's very small and very very chaotic full of reeds and uh, it's the most difficult water to take picture of. I'm um, going to follow this, this uh, path and cross this body of water. So I'm going to go on the other side and see what I can find over there. Because I have been there once before. The floor of the forest there is it's, uh, covered with moss and, uh, and blueberries and small green uh, plants. So let's see, let's see what what day brings us. Yeah, the stream is dried out. We usually have some water. Let's go inside the forest. Oh yeah, rain has started again. I'm looking for the small uh, small objects like a small tree, uh, something on the floor, or a. Uh, a pattern here in the forest. I might have spotted the first composition here. So, yeah, let's have a look at this one. So it's raining quite a lot now. Uh, lens is wet, the camera is wet, I'm soaked. Uh, so things have changed quite a lot. I'm taking this picture very quickly. I'm using the uh, circular polarizer uh, just to to reduce the, the glare and emphasize the, the colors. And that's it. It's way more difficult than I, I uh, expect it to be. Uh, the rain is quite heavy and I'm, I should have bring an umbrella. As you can see, I'm soaked uh, and uh, the camera is wet. And I think I lost the wide angle lens on my DJI pocket, unfortunately. That's a shame. Uh, well, I found a nice uh, tree here, a small tree between the bigger ones, and uh, it's a very young uh, aspen tree, I think. 
and I took a picture. I'm using the, the polarizer, uh, as I said, and uh, open my aperture to 4.5 or something like that. And uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm using the uh, a shower cap just to keep my camera less wet. Let's say that. <laughs> oh man. And this camera is also wet and it's not weather sealed, so I hope it uh, keep up today. By the way, about the lens, the lens I'm using is, uh, if I can show you, it's 16 to 55 millimeter. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this lens usually to woodland photography is the, the focal lens of this one. This is f2.8, so it can open to f2.8 if I need, but uh, usually. I'm fine with f4 and the bulb so that's not a reason even though usually inside the forest it's a bit darker and you need a faster lens but uh, focal lens is very practical for wood lens so you can open it up to 16 millimeter which is equivalent to 24 millimeter on full frame cameras and you can zoom into 55 which is kind of 80 millimeter on a, a full frame camera again. In woodland photography, it's good to, to be able to zoom in on subjects from distance, but you usually don't get too much of distance. So you don't need uh, above 100 millimeter usually because you cannot, there will be a lot of uh, branches and obstacles in front of you, between you and your subject. So 80, 80 millimeter is more than enough and you don't get to take a very wide angle picture either because then you will include the sky which is not good for woodland photography in most cases and uh, yeah you don't need a wide angle lens so mid-range is the best uh, for uh, for woodland photography Good news, I found the, the, the wide angle lens, it, it was my, my pocket. So that's a good news, I'm gonna keep it in my pocket because I'm gonna risk it, uh, risk losing it today, again. <laughs> that's safer. Let's live without the wide angle lens, we don't need it. <laughs> yeah, woodland, okay. No wide, um, wide angle lens. <laughs> Not too far from the other tree that I just took a photograph. I found this scene here. Let me show you. Uh, so we have this uh, dead tree here in the center. It is sand out, so I thought, uh, I thought it's gonna be a good subject. And yeah, so I'm using that as uh, my my main subject. And the, the flow like this here with the moss, uh, white moss and green moss and uh, yeah rain provides me some atmosphere here which is good the only thing that's good from the rain now is that the, the, the depth is created and uh, for this one i i use uh, i'm using f11 uh, and my lens is at uh, 35 millimeter uh, roughly 15 millimeter on uh, full frame camera and yeah, ISO 400 and one second for shutter speed. Still, it's quite dark. I don't believe it, but need ISO 400 to be able to, to take a picture of inside this, this forest right now. But that's good. Let's uh, let's go keep going. the composition I'm uh, taking now. I, I like this uh, small tree again here. It seems to be the theme of the, the 
today with the owl and taking pieces of a small trees inside the big forest. Uh, what I like about this feeling is that uh, we have so many uh, big uh, vertical dark uh, bark here behind it and we have a small path that goes uh, next through next and through the scene next to this, uh, this uh, small tree here. Right now, I'm um, using 23 millimeter uh, to compose the scene, and here is the composition. Let me bring the picture I took, and that's the tree, and uh, here is the path. The path is not so obvious, unfortunately, uh, but I can work with the colors to bring it out. And if you wonder why my pictures are uh, too green and yellow, that's uh, because I'm shooting with the mm, uh, with the fixed uh, white balance, like like a daylight white balance, something for for day. It's like uh, 6,500 Kelvin. I guess that's the, that's the fitting I put for my manual uh, white balance. And just to keep everything in the same. Uh, same color scheme and then I can easily edit them later. Here is the first uh, vertical composition of today. Uh, I like this, this path that goes through this uh, forest and I like this uh, a diagonal tree here and when you switch between the orientation horizontal and uh, vertical and when you are using this polarizer it's always uh, good to remember to to adjust the polarizer again <laughs> there have been so many times that I forgot to do that and take a picture and see why it doesn't look like the way it should be <laughs> And that's because I forgot to rotate the polarizer when I switched the, the orientation. But it's a silly, uh, silly tip, but it's an important one. <laughs> anyway, uh, here is the, the composition. As you can see, I put the path here in my... Uh, comes from the corner, the right corner, and goes uh, here. And here is the, 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 the tree that is created diagonal. So it, it breaks the, the, the pattern of the vertical lines, which is great, and it's also um, with this line that is this way, and uh, the path that goes this way, they are uh, like a mirror uh, line. I came across this scene here and uh, what I like about it is this uh, rock uh, on the floor covered with, with moss and that creates some sort of path through the, the forest and uh, in this one I'm not uh, excluding the sky actually I'm including it and I'm taking a vertical picture as you can see here in the back of the camera and uh, I I wasn't sure if should I go with the vertical or horizontal composition for this one. But for now, I'm doing uh, vertical. I might take a horizontal as well, and then compare them later on on the bigger screen. Uh, I have included this this big tree here on the left, uh, on the right, just to balance the image a little bit better with the, the, the smaller ones in the background here and then yeah that's it and <laughs> what I did was when I take a picture I, I breathe under the filter on the front element to create some uh, some fog and atmosphere feeling to this image like that you can see here that's a, that's a nice technique if you don't have a mist filter <laughs> you can do it yourself uh yeah let's try the uh, horizontal one as well for this one. Oh yeah by the way i there is a dead tree on the floor on that side behind this uh, 
these two trees here. So if I move a little bit, that's gonna be in my picture, but I position the camera somehow that uh, these trees actually covered that, uh, that dead tree, because I didn't want it to be in my picture. It was quite white and uh, distracting. If you like this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. That will help me massively. But for now, I'm uh, taking a picture of this scene. Uh, I have this path again and I have the mm, uh, a branch or a, a trunk of the tree that uh, lays on the ground and the, another path that goes around it and they both converge again in the middle of the scene. Uh, here is the here is the shot, um, the composition I'm, I'm taking, and uh, as you can see here, I positioned the camera some way that this uh, this log uh, is uh, is diagonal and comes from the corner. I I moved the camera a little bit back and forth and uh, to the right and left to find the best composition for this scene. The other thing I like about the scene is this uh, these puddles of the water on the ground that uh, they. They create some uh, some interest, uh, add some interest to the scene. To keep them in the frame and also to be able to show that this is a water on the surface, I have to remove the, the polarizer or reduce the amount of polarization uh, effect. So I took several pictures, uh, one with the polarizer, completely polarized, and so with that polarization, you don't see the water because it's a uh, cut the reflection. And then one picture with the, I took one picture with the kind of half uh, polarized. Uh, so I still have some uh, vibrant colors of the foliage and a little bit more of the reflection as well. And also I took a picture without the polarization at all. I can show you the differences here now. Here is the scene with the with the polarization effect. And if I it's completely polarized. As you can see, if I rotate the f uh, filter a little bit, we will see some some reflections in the puddles, uh, which is good. And if we remove it completely, then or I remove the filter, then there is no polarization. Uh, the rest of the image becomes a little bit too too white and washed out in my uh, for my taste, but uh, still we get the 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 nice reflection of the sky inside the water. Uh, I can mix these pictures together if I want later on or I can, uh, I can just choose this one which is half polarized. Thank you so much for watching this video so far and I hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, consider give it a thumbs up. I uh, I wish you have a good time now, and until next time, take care. Bye.